again everybody welcome to another episode of code this my name is trey hope the host or the developer of this show so to speak and today we're going to be doing something kind of similar like last time but uh, instead of just displaying static data in the list view we're going to give users the opportunity to put their own data in and we'll display it that way so versus last time where we just had like the nba teams this time we're going to let people input actual text and we're going to call this app kind of like a twitter i guess so to speak so you'll put in your username and then the text of the tweet submit it and it'll be displayed on this page so we have two pages that we're going to be working with today we have the tweets page right here which we'll be using to display the tweets and then i've already kind of populated this page but this is where we'll be creating the tweets so as you can see here it has two text fields one for username one for the tweet and then we have a button at the bottom that will allow us to actually capture the moment when we want to submit the data. So first thing that we need to do is we need to handle creating the tweets. So let's take a look at the database real quick. So as you can see here, we have a Firebase database here and we have a collection of tweets and right now it's empty. So what we want to do is we want to be able to allow the user to input a username, a tweet, submit it, and then that tweet will be essentially added to this collection. As you can see here, uh, the way the database works is it takes in documents that fill collections. So tweets and users are both collections, and then a document will be a specific tweet in that collection, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and get started. So on the create tweet page, as I said, we already have the form here. So what we want to do first is we want to be able to um, get the values of the data that we're working with. So we'll say um, when you press or when you press the button, well actually let's do this first. Just to show that it's working. We're also in debug mode, and I don't know if I stated that already, but uh, this allows us to see actual data, um, pause the debugger when we need to and things like that. So when we hit submit data, you'll see here that it says flutter testing. So right here, it printed out whatever we specified uh, on the on press function. So now let's go ahead and we want to be able to get the username, tweet, and the date that the tweet was created. So we'll say final string username equals username controller dot text. And the username controller is the controller that was tied to this text field. So whenever there is a modification to that text field, the controller automatically knows what's up. So we have username, we want the text of the tweet, get that from the text controller and then we also want the date that that tweet is created and the way we do that is date time dot now so essentially this variable created is always going to be whatever the time is currently so right now it's 557 so if we were to send this tweet right now the created variable will have a date time object that represents 557 all right, so now that we have the data, we want to add it to Firestore, uh, which is the database that we're working with. So we'll say Firestore instance dot collection. And remember, our collection name was tweets. So we're going to specify that right here. And then we're going to say add. And what add does, it takes an adjacent object, this is a, which is essentially a key uh, value pair object. So you'll have name. Uh, Trey Hope, um, age 27. Uh, it's always a key and a value. So we'll specify that here. So the first property is the text, which is going to be text, which we have right here. The username is going to be username, and the created value is going to be created. All right. So now when we submit this form, let's pass in a username, Travis92. Um, let's just say, how are you doing today? And then let's hit submit. All right. So if we check our database, there we go. We have our first tweet here, created March 20th at 558. Text says, how are you doing today? Username Travis92. Perfect. All right. 
So we have our tweet, but I didn't really like how that looked because we weren't sure if it was in the process of delivering the tweet or not. So the way we're gonna handle that is, um, we're gonna let this be an async function so that it runs asynchronously. That way, um, once we know that we're done sending the tweet, we can leave the page or take some type of action to let the user know, hey, it's complete. Um, so first, um, we have a is loading variable, which is a Boolean that's either true or false. And when it is loading, uh, we'll have this spinner that says submitting tweet. And when it's not loading, we'll have the form. So essentially what we wanna do is, as soon as the person hits on pressed or once they hit submit tweet, we wanna set the state of that is loading variable to true. Uh, hold on. It's true. All right. So like I said, initially it's false, so it's always going to display the form. But as soon as we hit submit tweet, we want the is loading to be true, so that we can display the spinner. All right. Um, and then once it's done, we'll, we'll add a, a weight to this, uh, adding the collection, adding the document to the collection. And what this does is it waits for Fire, uh, Firestore to actually deliver the tweet. So once it's done, we'll just navigate back to the previous page. And we'll do this with navigated out of context pop. Without this await here, as soon as we were to hit on press, it would instantly pop us back to the previous page. That's not what we want because the user's like, hold on, I just made a tweet. Did it send? Was there error? What happened? All right, so let's try this out now. We'll change the username to Craig. Terrible username, but we'll go with. Um, and then Craig is asking, how much is the game today? All right. So let's go ahead and hit submit tweet. All right. So as you can see, it had a little spinner for a second. It was very quick, so you might not have seen it. But uh, it had the loader, the spinning loader, and then it took us back. Let's try it one more time. Right, another username. Uh, what's a good? I don't know any good username. But let's just say Lil Uzi, I, I guess. Let's go with Lil Uzi. And Lil Uzi is saying, I have the number one album in the world right now. And he's excited about that. All right. Got the loader. Takes us back to the previous page. So now we should have three tweets in our collection right now. And we do. We got the one from Craig, the one from Little Uzi, and the one from myself as well. Perfect. All right, so this page is done. We are able to capture the moment when we create a tweet, uh, display it properly, um, or not display it properly, but put it into the database and then navigate to the previous page. So now what we want to be able to do is display the tweets once they're in the database. So we'll go back to the tweets page and we'll take out this center. And instead we're going to use a stream builder. What a stream builder is, is it essentially takes in a stream, uh, which is a stream of data. So let's say we call out to Firebase, hey, can you bring back all the tweets? Sure. It brings those tweets back in a stream and then we can manipulate it however we want to. So the first property that it's gonna take is a stream. So we're gonna say Firestore instance, collection, tweets. And we wanna order our tweets by the time that they were created. So we'll say order by, snapshots so a snapshot is essentially a snapshot of the entire database so what it's saying is hey take a snapshot of all the tweets you have currently and then order them by the created property we should be able to yeah. and we want to order them uh, in descending order so the most recent tweets will be at the top all right so we have the stream set now we need the builder the builder is going to take in a build context and async snapshot. Let me do it. No, it's not auto completing for me. Hold on. Let's see if I can work with it. Here we go. All right. So now that we have the snapshot of the tweets, we want to return a list view builder. Same thing that we used in the last episode where with the NBA teams, this time it's going to be for the tweets. So we're going to return, actually, my bad. First thing we want to do is we want to, we have to check some conditions because just because we have the snapshot doesn't mean that the data is ready to be displayed. 
So first thing we need to check is if the snapshot has data. If it doesn't have data, that means it's still loading. So we'll say if snapshot has data, and we'll negate it with the exclamation mark. So this says if snapshot does not have data, we're just going to return a center with text that says loading. All right. Cool. The next condition that we have, let's say that it has data now, but there's no documents, which can happen. Um, we'll say if snapshot data dot documents dot is empty, we'll say no tweets at this time. With a little style because I don't it's a little bland. There we go. And this tweet text style is a variable that I already specified. Just gives it a gray color and a font size of 26. And finally, the last condition is displaying the data. So if it has data, it has documents, now we want to just display those documents. So we'll say else, whoops, not brackets, or not those type of brackets. Um this is where we'll return a list view builder. List view builder. Let's pass in the item count first. And the item count is going to be however many documents are on the snapshot. So we'll say snapshot data dot documents dot length. And then we're going to say item builder, which takes in a build context and gives us the index of whatever item we are on in the list view. All right, so we have this, we have the index of whatever tweet we're on. So let's specify which tweet we're actually on. So like I said, the snapshot brings all the documents back. We only want one at a time. So we'll say document snapshot tweet doc equals snapshot data dot documents at index and there we go so it'll bring back the first document second document third document so on and so on all right we have the tweet doc now we want to return a, a list type it's going to have a title and the title is going to be the username so whoever posted the tweet we want to display their username as the title so we'll say tweet doc which has data and now we're going to specify what property on the data that we want to use right here and that's going to be the username so let's try that out real quick all right so as you can see here okay yeah i'm not sure i was displaying multiple um but it's showing the usernames of all the tweets that we currently have so let's go back to our database again remember we have travis 92 little uzi and craig we have all the usernames right here now we want to display the actual tweet that they um, that they submitted. So we'll say tweet dot dot data text. Now we have the actual tweet that goes with them. And finally, we want to be able to display how long ago this tweet was sent. And I'm going to be using the framework that I, I, I usually use in all my apps. It's called Time Ago that allows you to pass in a date and it spits out the difference between right now in time versus the time it was sent. So right here, we'll say text, uh, tweet dot, dot data, and that's going to be created. But we need to call to date because right now in the database, the created value is of type timestamp, which doesn't really work for what we want right now. So we're going to convert it to a date and display it right here. I didn't put the time ago. Here we go. Time ago format. And you see it asks for a date. I'm just gonna pass in that date that we have. Let's make this a little beautiful. All right, title, subtitle, uh, well, username, text, and then when it was created. All right, so as you can see here, Lil Uzi sent his tweet seven minutes ago. Craig sent his eight minutes ago. I sent mine 10 minutes ago. 
right? And they're ordered by the time they were created as we specify here. So let's do uh, one more tweet, just to see it in action. Uh, username, Bobby Johnson. Let's go with that. That's a terrible username too, but I like it. Um, he's gonna be asking, hey, where is my car? All right, we're gonna submit that tweet. Bobby Johnson, hey, where's my car? A moment ago. So he just sent his, so it's not even gonna say one minute ago, it's just gonna say a moment ago. And this is essentially the Twitter app that we just made. So, like I said, today we worked on creating tweets, storing them to the database, streaming them with a stream builder, and displaying them in the app itself. So again, thank you for tuning in, watching another episode of Code This. My name is Trey Hope. As always, stay humble, stay hungry. Peace, much love.